three smurfs against Hector. Can they do it? We'll see. We've gone and sent Hector to do something completely crazy. Smurf normally in low elo. No challenge, just some classic Hector showing us how to easily carry despite the catastrophic circumstances that can and do occur in low elo. As we heard, he's against a couple of smurfs and they're all quite fed. Meanwhile, he's just playing the irrelevant ADC role. We'll be testing your knowledge to see if you could get out of this dire situation just like he did. So let's get right into it. All right, let's get the context of the game down so we know exactly what kind of situation he's dealing with. Along with Leona, by maintaining the wave near his tower the whole laning phase, they were easily able to continually kill the enemy Sona and Hector was able to build a huge lead for himself in bot. In any other game, this would be an easy 15 minute win for him in low elo, but unfortunately that was not the case here. The enemy team already has two dragons, an Akali with a couple of kills, a set who will be unkillable, and an 8-0 Riven at just 14 minutes into the game. Most ADC players looking at this situation would probably sigh as the imminent one-shotting will soon commence. But instead, let's see how Hector easily turns this game around with some simple macro decisions. Thankfully, he was hard winning lane and managed to take the first tower gold all for himself, earning him a nice chunk of change. After clearing this wave, he moves toward the river. Based on what you know, what do you think his next step should be? I might just stay in a side lane here. Might be able to kill the Sona, and then I can continue pushing, and that would be really good. He didn't explain why in the commentary, but notice the map. We see both the Riven and Set in the river and Akali in top. In these types of games, it's very important to find isolated lanes that you can actually farm until you have two or three items. You want to avoid the fed solo laners at all costs, and bot lead is free besides the feeding support Sona. Of course, there's the number one thing people bring up anytime we suggest side laning or split pushing. But my team will just die if I leave them alone, which is exactly what happens to Hector's team. Three of his teammates die while he was taking this bot lane tower. The most important thing to keep in mind when side laning is having the wave constantly pushed very far up in the lane, just like it is in this example. Your team will inevitably die if you leave them alone for too long. That's fine as long as you aren't near your own towers when split pushing. What usually happens when low elo players try to split is that they usually don't pressure fast enough. This gives the enemy team ample time to set up their picks on your team while also having enough time to recall and defend your cross map play. It is crucial that you are always pushing aggressively in a side lane so that the enemy team is pressured into bad decisions and don't have much time to react appropriately. Sometimes the pressure of you taking towers can even allow your team to win an outnumbered fight, simply because the enemy team felt pressured into doing something irrational. If you apply this appropriately, then you can also stop worrying about your teammates dying in the first place. The best part about cross mapping is that you're funneling gold onto one person, which is something we bring up a lot and for good reason. Notice the enemy kill feed. Ribbon got a kill, Varus got a kill, and Akali got a kill. Then they share the top tower. So at most, each of these players got around 500 gold. Hector, on the other hand, started with 1200 gold and ended at 1900 for a total of 700 gold earned with his decision. Sure, in total gold, his team definitely lost this trait, but individually, he actually came out on top of everyone. And that's in the worst case scenario where his entire team died. With his earnings, he takes his recall and immediately paths toward mid, since that's where you usually want to end up as an ADC at some point. Based on what you've seen happen in the meantime, what do you think he should do after clearing this wave? If you've been keeping up with our ADC guides, you should instantly know to move bot lane here without hesitation. Vladimir should absolutely be in the side lane, but if he's going to tilt and walk straight back to mid, there's nothing you can do about that. A bit of randomness occurs here with the fight breaking out from trying to kill Akali. She barely lives, and then they barely manage to kill Set before Hector is eventually taken down by the collapsing ribbon. We're obviously not going to break down this fight since there's no way to generalize it, but it does give us a nice comment from Hector. I think the only thing that's going to prevent me from carrying this game is my mechanics. Literally the only thing. These players don't seem very good. Look at their CS numbers. They're just kind of like mediocre smurfs. They're like platinum or diamond players. That's a neat literary device known as foreshadowing. Let's see how that plays out at the end. After spawning, Hector heads middle, but his team is unfortunately dying right before the third Drake spawns. What do you think you should do in this situation? 
I can't really help my team, so I'm just gonna push and try and like cross map something. I'll go take their jungle camps and stuff. We, we have to give the third dragon. There's nothing I can do about that. Literally nothing. The answer was a bit of a gimme based on our previous question, but that exact situation comes up so often when we review low elo games that we had to include it. Players love to sit there and watch the enemy team take a dragon they can't stop. If you can't contest it, don't waste a moment on it. Look to see what you can trade instead. Acting with zero hesitation allowed him to take both the Raptor and Krug camp, along with a couple of waves top lane as well as the tower. That is a huge chunk of gold. I know Kali is here, by the way. I'm well aware that she was coming towards me. Uh, I didn't time that that well. Maybe I can snipe. Nice. Here's the point where some of you may be thinking, okay, but what if I'm not a fed Kaisa? I can't just do that as another ADC. Yes, yes you can. He does this on every champion, even team fighters like Sivir or Jinx. If you want to carry as ADC, you need to realize that low elo assassin players generally have zero idea what they're doing. You are not against Showmaker, Faker, or Caps. You're against Timmy, who loses half his health bar before deciding to initiate a fight as a Kali with his E. If you know nothing about a Kali, let's just say he didn't play it as well as he could have. Hector won this because he's 95 CS ahead of a Kali and a level up on her, not because he's Kai'Sa. The main point here is that low elo assassin players are used to being able to fumble their combos and still score kills on ADCs, because ADCs typically do not do damage or have levels in low elo. But if you're farming well and have your core items, you'll notice just how easily you're able to just auto attack them to death in a couple of seconds most of the time. And just so you know, the full live commentary from this game and hundreds of others are available right now over at Skillcapped. We upload tons of these every week, and they're the best resource to see exactly how challengers carry games in the elo you actually play in, with teams that feed their ass off in the early game just like this. Moving on, his team also wins the 4v3 on the other side of the map, so it's a huge swing in the game. After taking the top tower, Hector greeds and stays out on the map for a while until he gets enough gold for his death cap. The reason he could do so is because, if you notice here, there's no objectives coming up anytime soon besides Baron, which is easily defended. The enemy team also has to fix the waves that Hector and his team are pushing in. That means there's no fight likely to occur soon, so Hector can take his time and greed for the perfect base. If, for example, Dragon was spawning soon, then he couldn't do this, and we'd advocate recalling immediately so that you can be on time for the fight. Unfortunately, after basing and getting back out on the map... I'm not sure if... Oh my god, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. It's my bad. That's a good mentality to have. It's easy to blame the Leona for not placing almost any wards and not immediately pathing there to scout it. But Hector could have also used either his W or Blue Trinket to scout himself. In low elo, it's your job to make up for your teammates' shortcomings. But he was distracted and let the enemy team back into the game with a sneaky play. This Baron take leads into a weird situation. Hector and friends try to set up a pick. It doesn't work, so his team tries to kill Akali while the enemy pushes. But she manages to get away, and they just end up losing mid and hib for free. This was just an odd sequence of events, but the main issue was definitely not scouting Baron, which led to all of these shenanigans in the first place. It all leads into this Dragon Soul fight that his team has to win, but if you've been keeping up with the game so far, you'd realize that, yeah, Hector is really, really fed at this point, and hard carries the fight. After winning the fight, he splits bottom for a bit trying to earn enough gold for Zonia's while the enemy team is dead. Then he looks for a pick on the isolated Varus before heading back to his wave. Based on what we've seen and what's displayed on the map, what do you think you would do next? Now, basing for Zonia's would be really nice, but my team just got a pick and they're about to maybe get another, so pressuring right now is really good. I'll just put a lot of pressure here. My ultimate's almost up as well, so I should be able to like 1v2 people. Yeah, nice job team. I'll play safe here. I can't really walk up yet. I haven't seen the other three, but once the other three like respond. It's always important to remember the distinction between a bad plan or just poor execution. 
His idea was really good. With two dead, all he has to do is wait and see where the enemy goes. If they come bottom, his team gets a free top inhibitor. If they go top, he can come out of hiding and get the bottom inhib. But he stood in the worst spot possible, next to a wall and the turret remains like this. Hector has almost no space to work with. He has to kite into the set, taking free damage the entire time. Compare that to the previous Akali clip. In the center of the lane, he has so much space to maneuver in that he can be unpredictable based on Akali's approach. With that in mind, the correct positioning here would be to stand on the other wall. That way, Set would take a barrage of damage before he can even get close to him, likely resulting in a completely different outcome. Or if he wasn't this fed, or perhaps playing a weaker ADC like Jinx, he could even stand all the way back here in the brush, so that it's impossible to get caught out. He was just being stupid and greedy. Nevertheless, the end goal was still achieved. The enemy trio came bottom, so his team traded the top lane in Hib in response. After respawning, he heads toward middle. When you're actually strong as an ADC, obviously you should group when objectives are coming up and Baron is spawning. He's looking for some poke mid and gets caught out, dies, and the game is completely lost off of this death. I think the only thing that's going to prevent me from carrying this game is my mechanics. Literally the only thing. At least it wasn't a mechanical misplay. Instead, it was tunnel vision to the max, trying to snipe Varus with two W's. No, 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 I wasn't. Are you serious? Is this, how, is this really how I lose? With that mental breakdown, let's wrap things up. Although he threw it all at the end, it is important to keep in mind how completely in control he was over the entire game. Even with mechanical misplays in fights, or spacing on his map awareness giving over Baron, he was still absurdly ahead of everyone despite how hard his team was feeding. In fact, as he got cut out, he was two levels higher than everyone on the map and 4,000 gold ahead of the Giga Fed Riven. This is what you should strive for as an ADC player. You shouldn't pray to get some shutdowns in teamfights. Be proactive instead and look to cross map every time the enemy team does something. That way you'll always be relevant and you can be the deciding factor in who wins or loses the game. Just don't throw. That wraps it up for this one. Remember, the full game and hundreds of others by Hector and our other challengers are available over at Skillcapped. Thanks for watching.